What is up everybody? How you doing? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. In today's episode 10 of First Things First, so let's just jump right in. So I don't know about you guys, but your girl has been feeling very tired lately. Tired of fighting, tired of waiting, tired of always trying to do the right thing. You know, sometimes we are in a place where we are doing really good. We are enjoying living this life out. Doing the right thing is easy. We are ambitious. We have a lot of energy and a lot of strength. And then sometimes, you know, we're in seasons where we're tired of always having to think things through and always having to check our heart and all this stuff. Fighting the good fight becomes pretty difficult. The Bible talks about this because God knows that as people we're going to get tired. Even Jesus got tired because when he came to this earth, he was flesh and bone just like us. If you look in the Bible, you look at Jesus' life, there are times when Jesus would stop teaching, he would get away from the people, and he would just rest. I think a lot of times as, as humans, we forget that that's okay. So when we grow tired, we have a choice. We can either sit in it and search the world for things that we know are gonna make us feel better. We can give into temptation and choose the easy way. Or we can look to God, we can rest in Him. Let Him give us strength and stay faithful to Him as He is to us. I am still trying to learn to rest in God. It's something I have a really hard time with. For me, rest looks pretty toxic. For me, rest in the past has come from indulging in sin, has come from really harmful things and it's hard for me to switch that and learn that I can truly rest in Jesus. Today I want to talk about three ways that we grow weary. First one I want to talk about is growing weary and doing good. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. As for you brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. Now what does doing good mean? It means choosing the righteous path, doing the things that the Lord has asked us to do, walking in a way that represents Jesus and follows his example. It means keeping our hearts and our minds on the kingdom and humbling ourselves. Every day we make choices that affect us and affect those around us. Every day we come to this crossroad where we get to choose which path we're gonna take. And day after day after day, doing good and choosing the good path becomes incredibly hard, if not impossible, if we're not leaning on God, if we're not involving God in our lives. Now the part of us that is purely and infinitely good is the Spirit of God within us. So if we're trying to do good without God or without God's help or without spending time with God, that's almost impossible because the good is God. Our flesh is always warring against us and fighting that fight on our own strength never works. We were never meant to walk without God and we were never meant to fight without God on our side. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Now when things get really tricky is when we find things that make us feel better, find things that we feel like give us rest, and things that go against everything God says is good. Now not only are you exhausted, but you found these ways that you know will give you pretty instant gratification and rest. Whether it's drugs or alcohol or sex or eating or shopping or self-harm or whatever it is, there is now this whole other path and road that has become available to you. But the problem with these things is they are fleeting and they are harmful. Now Satan likes to paint this picture that these things are really good for you, they're really helpful for you, and God is mistreating you by withholding them from you because God is unkind and manipulative or whatever. The truth is, all these things are a counterfeit version of the peace and the joy that we can only find in Jesus. So choosing the right way to do the right thing can get real tiring real fast, but only when we forget about God. When you are drawing near to God, you actually want to walk this out. You actually start to hate all other options because your heart is starting to look more and more like the Father's. There is a hunger and a desire to do good, to walk out the life that God has asked us to walk out when you are drawing near to God, when you are becoming close to Him and having that sweet, intimate relationship with Him. And when we start to get annoyed by that stuff and we start to think it is dumb or it's pointless, usually means we're drifting farther and farther away from God. Are you growing weary and doing good? First off, that's okay. God knows that we as people are gonna get exhausted in this life. God is not asking you to not rest because even Jesus did that. 
but if you are sick and tired of doing the right thing, you're probably drifting far away from the heart of God. Now the second is growing weary and waiting. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. I have a couple of promises that I'm waiting on just in my life, but the biggie is a husband. And I know I'm not the only one who's waiting on a relationship. I know it's hard. I know we're on the struggle bus together. Throughout my life, I've come in and out of really wanting a relationship. Sometimes I'm independent and I'm thriving and I'm good and me and Jesus are homies and I don't really feel that lack very much. And then sometimes, you know, it's a little bit more interesting and difficult. But looking back, I am so happy and so grateful that God has waited because if I was in a relationship, even through these past two, three years, there's no way it would have worked out. Like there's no way that would have been good for anybody involved. God knew that. So when I was asking him to give me a husband, he knew that I was about to have, you know, a mental breakdown. Now coming on the other side of some things, I am seeing that God's timing really is perfect and he does know what he's doing. But every once in a while, I get in this place where I really am tired of waiting. And it seems like everybody else is getting the gift that I feel like God has promised to me. And that can really suck. <laughs> a lot of times I want to cheat the system, go around God so I can have what I want, when I want, but I know that what God has for me is so much better than anything I could ever have for myself. And I know that he is protecting my story. Is waiting easy? No. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Whatever it is you're waiting for, trust in God's timing. Remember that his plan is better and hold tightly to him until you receive it. Remember that if you stay faithful in the waiting, there's gonna be so much baggage that you aren't gonna have to carry into the promised land. The third is growing weary in pain. There are times in our lives when it feels like pain will never leave. Like bad things just keep happening and we can barely keep our head above water. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. A couple of years ago when my mental health got really, really bad, everything hurt and everything was painful and was hard and it truly felt like it was never going to end and it was just constant all the time. I turned from God. I was angry and I was confused and I was hurt and I stayed so long in that pit of despair, refusing to let God help me. Now one day after a year or so of just constant darkness, horrible, not good stuff, things just getting worse and worse and worse. Um, I had this this moment where I had a couple of friends pray for me. Of course, when they prayed for me, I was like, oh, I don't want to get away from me, but it allowed me to open up to God even just a little bit. And since that day, things were never the same. Yes, I still had issues. I was still going to therapy. I still had the same diagnosis. Like things were still not perfect, but having God in the picture changed everything. And from then on, I only made progress. Even though the pain was still there, God was there too, and that made everything different. The more I let God in, the better things got. Not because my situation changed, but because my heart began to heal. I truly believe that God wraps us in his love and protection when we're suffering. He gives us space to hurt, to mourn, and to shatter. But what happens when we turn from God in our pain? Have you ever been angry with God? Have you ever blamed God for something? I know I have. When bad things happen, there is a place where we can lay our heads where we can be safe, where we can be comforted, where we can be held. And that place is in the arms of Jesus. No matter what you are going through, even if it feels like you truly won't get through it, because I know that feeling, God stays closer than a brother and he will take your hand and help you keep moving. When pain seems never ending, it's almost impossible to not become so exhausted that you wanna just give up. Even when your feet can't move anymore, give your heart over to the Lord. The only way we lose is if we take God out of the equation. Oh, in conclusion, we grow weary sometimes in this life. And God is not saying that that's bad. God is not saying that that's not okay. God is expecting that. God has placed grace for that because as people, as humans, that happens, it even happened to Jesus. There is a level of weariness that comes when you are distant from God, when you are distant from the Spirit. And I promise, I promise, I promise, I know it doesn't feel like it, but if you will give God a chance to come into your situation and to be with you, I promise it's gonna make all the difference. Trust Him, let Him in, let Him love on you. 
now it's time for health because Lord knows I need it. Okay. So the physical tip of the day, and again, this is going to sound ridiculous. It's just we, we've come to expect it. Have we not? Yes, we have. But today's physical tip is to walk. It is interesting how much walking can affect. It helps your back, it helps your abs, it helps your hips, it helps everything. It's just a good overall, it's not too much of an exercise that you're like killing your body, but it's also moving all of your joints, getting you good and mobile. Dogs shut up, we're just gonna ignore it, everything's okay. Now we're vacuuming, my dad's making bread. What is my life? I live in a circus. Anyway, something that I used to do, which I really wish I still did, but I don't. Anyway, not the point, is I would get up in the morning and go on a walk every day, and the amount of difference it made was ridiculous. My back was so much better. My body was better. Walking is good. The mental tip of the day is, this is going to sound weird, but I'll explain it. Ride the wave. Don't fight it. This is more specific for anxiety or people who are experiencing stress or panic attacks or anxiety attacks and things like that. I have learned that I have a tendency to really try to fight it when I'm freaking out or having a hard time and like will myself to not do that anymore. Let me tell you that's not how it works and that's not going to help, it actually makes it worse. So you've gotta learn, and I know it sounds counterproductive and it sounds wrong, but you've gotta learn to just ride that wave and hold on until you feel better. There are things you can do when you're having anxiety attacks or when you're really having a hard time to help you in the moment. But overall, even just in general anxiety, you've got to learn to kind of just let it go through the motions and just know that you're going to be okay and it will end. The health favorite of today is resistant bands. I got some for Christmas that I've been using. Let me tell you something. It is amazing. It just adds a little something, something to your workout and it's fantastic fill the burn. I have two challenges for you today. Of course, the first one is to do three leg workouts. They can be in glutes, they can be calves, they can be whatever you want. Three leg workouts, let's do it, we got this. The second challenge is to write down three things that you like about yourself. It can be whatever, and if this feels weird to you, or you don't know how to do this, or you can't think of anything, then that means you need to be doing this. Self-love, baby, let's freaking get it done. At least three things, more if you want to, but at least three things that you love about yourself. Got it, people, we freaking got this. All right, it's time for coffee talk. Ooh, ooh, even though my coffee is almost empty, it's fine. So, today's topic of conversation is dieting. I am on a diet. Listen, things have happened. At New Year's, I was like killing it. I had a goal. Things were happening, working out, eating good. It was a thing. But then life happened and it's slowly starting to crumble and that's okay. I'm giving myself grace but I do need to get back on it. I struggle with diets, I get really bored, and I don't like sticking to a regimen, and I like to just ugh, whenever, and then when I'm working and I'm getting busy and there's a lot going on, I'll forget to eat, and then when I do eat, it's just whatever I grab, and I'm really hyped up right now on coffee, so I'm sorry I'm talking really fast, but diets are crazy, and for me, I like to just try to live a healthy lifestyle and not really worry about it, so I don't really follow a specific program I just try to make better choices, you know, keep my calories to this amount, eat this much protein. I try to do all those things because strict diets for me, one, in the past I've had eating problems with not eating enough and losing too much weight. So I'm really iffy about diets now because it kind of triggers kind of that stuff for me. I try not to get really intense about dieting things. Um, I need to start eating more protein. What is happening? I need to start eating more veggies and fruits. I need to start drinking more water. Lord help me, I'm dehydrated all the time. I need to get back into working out and going to the gym, all of these things. So I'm like semi for and semi against dieting. I think sometimes you need to be really disciplined and you need to really stick to something and diets and that way can be okay. I think diets can be really harmful and they can be really dangerous and you just gotta figure out where you are and and what you want to do. I have a very love-hate, mostly hate relationship with dieting. So stick with me. We'll see how this journey goes. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. That's all I have to say on the subject. Okay, lovelies, we are coming to the end of the video when we prep and we prepare our hearts to start this day. However you woke up, whether you woke up feeling good or you woke up feeling lousy, Today is a new day, new blessings, new mercies, and it can be a good day. Here are five things to remember. 
first, always, forever. Today does not have to be perfect. I can't say it enough. Today is what today is. Do your best, whatever. But today does not have to be perfect. Number two, being tired is okay. If you have grown weary, if life has been really hard lately, if you've been going really fast, it's okay to be tired and it is okay to rest. Talk to God. See what you can do. Make it work. Take care of yourself. Number three, rest in God, not in the world. We have a choice. We have two paths that we can take and I promise going down the path with Jesus is so much better, so much more fruitful, so much more fulfilling than anything else. Number four, the pain will not last forever. I don't know who this is for or where you are or what's going on, but even if you feel like this is never gonna end, the pain will not last forever. Number five, always remember to breathe today in and out. Everything is going to be okay. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff, hit that subscribe button. I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. And I will see you tomorrow.